thanks everyone for uh, inviting me over for this uh, interesting session today's talk uh, i think dr sujit giri has already uh, set the motion and he has already covered uh, uh, nicely most of my work which i am actually overlapping and sharing with him he was uh, an arrow and i am the eyes now so he came with a needle and stimulator i am coming with ultrasound so ultrasound uh, about the clavicle would be the pa first part of my talk and the second part second part would be the um the covid uh, 19 situation and then what are the special precautions you should be taking with regards to uh, ultrasound guided uh, locks uh so the advantage of ultrasound over nerve stimulation as well as uh, paresthesia which is now uh, quite age old practice uh is we have got so many uh, positives if you use ultrasound you get direct visualization of the nerve patterns and the vessel so you can go even closer than uh, the nerve stimulation technique accuracy of the needle placement visualization of your spread so you can compromise on the volume you can go down on the volume to keep the precise block and it compensates for the all the anatomical variations uh, if there are uh, it avoids intraneural intravascular injections chances of neural and vascular functions in case of supraclavicular and uh, interstitial blocks are less block onset which is uh, quite uh, uh, need of the time should be really quick so in a in a covid situation so with ultrasound the onset of block is uh, faster if the spread is really good if you are really very close to the nerves and it reduces the dose requirement and it, overall the patient satisfaction is more because you are causing less uh, simulation of the, the painful side or painful uh, area and uh, the procedure is uh, short uh, lived compared to the nerve stimulation and lens marking uh, sorry yeah so going back to the uh, the anatomy again i'm just asking you to focus on the first two parts the nerve the roots and the trunk and the divisions basically this upper part the important nerve which dr sujit has told this uh, supra scapular nerve which is uh, the uh, nerve which differentiates between the interstitial block or the supraclavicular block even in the ultrasound guided blocks so that's the that's the main nerve the other nerves which uh, segregates interscalene from the supraclavicular would be the dorsal scapular nerve and then long thoracic nerve which we are not intending to block but the dorsal scapular nerve could be useful in uh, scapular surgeries and the ulnar nerve which makes uh, supraclavicular block superior to interscalene block because uh, interscalene cat1 won't be covered uh, effectively uh, so that makes the block these two block are uh, uniquely different from each other and when we talk about the ultrasound guided regional anesthesia about clavicle there are five distinctive uh, blocks we can do interscalene brachial plexus and supraclavicular brachial plexus which we are discussing at the moment but superficial and deep cervical plexus is also you can easily see visualize with the ultrasound uh, and uh, it is retroclavicular brachial plexus which is actually infraclavicular block but the needle goes from the above clavicle so this is another addition into semi above or below clavicle block and individual nerve like suprascapular nerve could be done for chronic pain or frozen shoulder so these are the blocks which we can do above the clavicle with ultrasound uh, but the choice of the block uh, depends uh, mainly on the three factors first would be the patient factors so the patient has got difficult anatomy uh, obese patients short neck patient or the patient with copd and the patient with anticoagulations and we have to keep in mind while providing the block am i going to block the phrenic nerve which would be 100% blocked in interstitial block or supraclavicular has got 40 to 60% chance of blocking the phrenic nerve if the patient is on anticoagulation then we have to be very careful with the vascular uh, area so with ultrasound the chances of vascular punctures are less because you visualize the needle all the time uh, anatomical knowledge is important when you are deciding the block if uh, the block area is quite uh, distal then blocking the whole plexus is uh, not needed then it's an overkill and then you are adding more risk to the patients as well as your uh, block uh, uh, failure could be high go for the distal blocks if there is if at all you are doing a hand or finger surgeries 
uh, you don't need to really block the plexuses then. You can individually block the nerves in question. So it requires expertise and the resources, ultrasound uh, uh, availability, and the duration of the type of the surgery. So longer the surgery, then you would need concentrated blocks, uh, dense block, and uh, tunicate involvement or not, all those factors you have to keep in mind before providing the upper limb blocks. So it's not only the cutaneous uh, uh, dermatomal distribution you have to keep in mind, but the myotomal as well as the osteotomal uh, dermatomal distribution in your mind before providing the block, which is plexus block versus uh, indigenous blocks. So now focusing back on these two blocks, interscalin and supraclavicular. Interscalin block has got uh, su suprascapular nerve, which which actually supplies 70% of the shoulder joint. It's reliably blocked with that one. And uh, another nerve which is needed is axillary nerve to block the almost 90% uh, of the shoulder surgeries. So that is reliably blocked with interscalin block. But if you are blocking the area which is uh, involving the ulnar nerve, the surgery which is involving the ulnar nerve dermatome or myotome, then interscalin is not a choice of uh, block then you have to go for the supra, uh, supraclavicular, which has got a uh, slightly more consistent block with unknown nerve. There is still sparing with uh, supraclavicular, but uh, uh, you will block uh, more, derm uh, more dermatomes and more nerves with supraclavicular, which is the spinal of the arm. So quickly about the indications uh, for interscalin block, you will see the red area, which is uh, well covered by the uh, shoulder area, uh, uh, interscalin block. So shoulder arthroplasty, frozen shoulders, clavicular fractures, even scapular surgeries, we have been using interscalin block because all the rotator cuff muscles, they lose the tone and, uh, and the analgesia from that also is needed for fixing the scapula if there, there is this kind of operation. Well, uh, in, in supraclavicular block, uh, it is not preferred for shoulder surgery as such because it may skip the suprascapular nerve, which I'll show you on ultrasound how easy it is. And uh, it is mainly the result for distal humeral operation, elbow operations. Anything beyond uh, forearm and hand surgery, the supraclavicular becomes an overkill. So you have to resort to axillary or maybe then individual nerve blocks, which with ultrasound, you can reliably see them and block them. Patient position and preparation, as Dr. Sujit has already shown in details. Uh, with ultrasound, the position of the patient is you have to turn the neck of the patient on the contralateral side of the block. And uh, you need these kind of preparation. You need high frequency linear uh, ultrasound probe, preferably with the Doppler function, because uh, above clavicle, you will encounter vessels. Uh, the main vessel would be subclavian artery, but the branches coming from the carotid, which are the dorsal scapular artery and the, um, the transfer cervicalis artery, that can traverse through the supraclavicular uh, plexus uh, as well, uh, brachial plexus. So you have to have uh, Doppler function ready because everything looks hypoechoic, which is dark, uh, sorry, the black uh, in color. The nerves are emerging from the uh, plexus. They still are yet to get the connected tissue. So the echo from the nerves is very less and they are hypoechoic. So they will look like vessels. Only the pulsation or the Doppler can differentiate between them. So the preparation wise, you will have all this cleaning stuff, uh, chlorhexidine, local anesthetic of your choice, syringes, block needle, preferably stimuplex. If you are using nerve stimulator along with uh, ultrasound, then it is useful. Ultrasound gel, ultrasound probe. If you are doing catheter, then you will need a uh, proper probe cover as well. Always do a scout scan and have a sonar anatomical pattern and a plan made in your mind, and then routine monitoring. So this would be the ergonomics. You have to have ultrasound at your uh, eye level you don't have to uh, have twist your, your neck and uh, jumble yourself up while you're doing the block and the patient's neck turning on the other side interscaling uh, it's a uh, most common uh, regional anesthesia technique for shoulder as you can see in the picture the these nerve c5 c6 is the area of interest over here the nerve roots and uh, those are the main targets and they, they, they are sandwiched between the anterior and middle scalene muscles. They, the, the, the square over here you're seeing is actually the, the, the way you should be keeping the uh, ultrasound probe. 
you have to cut the nerves at the 90 degrees with the ultrasound beam so that you get the better visualization. And 10 to 15 ml of uh, local anesthetic of your choice, which is uh, ropioacane or bupioacane, uh, would be enough for blocking these two nerve roots reliably. And for ultrasound, you have to have a sono anatomical pattern, which uh, you will do in the scout scanning before you start putting the needle in. So you have to have picture like this where you have a caterpillar or a bunch of a set of traffic traffic light you can see sandwiched between anterior scalene muscle and middle scalene muscle and uh, on top of it you will see the cernicular mustoid uh, the lateral border of it and actually as dr sujit was saying if you really want to put some local anesthesia for the cervical plexus then this is the area where you'll be delivering a little bit of uh, a little uh, five to six ml of ligno, lignocaine 1% and that will block the superficial cervical plexus as well along with the block over here in the uh, interscalene. So the landmark wise, you will go on the lateral border of the uh, clavicular head of the, uh, uh, the, the um, cernicular mastoid, putting the probe like so and uh, looking for the scan pictures like this. You will have three to four nerves looking in one queue like traffic signal and two muscles lying side by side and the nerve roots in between sternically the mastoid on the top and this is a very simple pattern you have to have this pattern in your mind and you will just uh, be okay uh, so coming from the medial side injecting just within the nerve sheet uh, you don't have to really go up and down so much uh, damaging the nerves or the sheet just uh, local anesthetic at one point can really traverse down to the, the whole uh, plexus area there. And you have to be mindful about these two nerves in the passage in the uh, middle scalene muscle, the dorsal scapular nerve or the long thoracic nerve. So on ultrasound, they may look like just uh, white dots into the, into the belly of the middle scalene muscle. So your area of, um, so, you, so the needle should really bypass those ones. This is a picture taken, a uh, video taken by Dr. Ritesh Roy, who is actually one of the audience over here. I took it uh, from YouTube this uh, afternoon. It was quite reliably a small uh, video setting. As he has shown uh, with Doppler, he has shown uh, the vertebral uh, artery and vein as well. And once you have done the scout scan, you know that uh, the uh, three two to three nerve roots you are seeing between the muscles, just target between C5 and C6 like so. And uh, just puncturing very delicately the sheet between the nerve roots, not really targeting to the nerve roots directly, but just on the sheet. And with a little bit of hydrodesection, section, you can confidently see that the nerve roots are moving away and they are not really getting swollen with your needle. Have the needle tip visualized all the time and uh, Good five to 10 ml should be enough, but uh, in a COVID situation, make sure that you have a uh, really well circumscribed cover of the local anesthesia over here so that you don't have to give so much sedation and the uh, maybe G in case uh, the block doesn't, is not concentrated enough. Sorry. What happened? Just not moving. Okay. So again, this one uh, has already been shown. So you can see the, the, the interscalene groove is very close to the phrenic nerve around over here and the steelhead ganglion. So extra local anesthetic, more volume can trickle over and can cause the, the complication or the side effects of the uh, extra blocks of the phrenic nerve and uh, the steelhead ganglion. So the tips when you're using the ultrasound, uh, you can refine your technique. So be mindful about the phrenic nerve. So now this is the different orientation. This side is the, the uh, medial side and this is the lateral side. So when you are putting the needle, just put the needle around over here. Don't really travel too much. Don't put so much of local anesthetic traveling onto the uh, border of the entry scale muscle because this is the phrenic nerve over here. And the more you put it, the more reliably you will block the phrenic nerve and the concentrated uh, block will stay for longer. Um, Beware of the dorsal scapular and the long thoracic nerve, as I said. So your needle should be traveling just above these two nerves, not involving uh, into the passage these two nerves over here. So these nerves are hypoechoic, means they are black nerves, 
less connective tissue. So too much of spearing with the needle, as you may see into the in uh, uh, nerve stimulation technique or paresthesia technique, you will be poking into the nerve roots and then they can cause uh, paresthesia for weeks. They can cause uh, nerve damage for that will last for more than weeks. So with ultrasound, you can reliably block uh, without damaging these two when you're seeing very closely. There have been a lot of uh, publications about intraplexus versus uh, periplexus injections. So periplexus is like going just outside the, 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 the sheet, but off the muscles over here. And intraplexus is going inside the plexus and injecting there. They have shown the, the onset is almost the same and the quality of the block is the same. So I would rather stay periplexus and uh, be safe. And catheter replacement can be done, but uh, in COVID uh, situation, probably we are avoiding the, the catheter maintenance, in the post-op and the round. So we are just uh, skipping away doing the catheter technique. There's a big uh, 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 move now to avoid the phenic nerve, even if you are using the interscaling block. So they, uh, there have been modifications to the interscaling block with ultrasound. You can very well do all these things. The most important over here is the superior trunk block, which I'll uh, just uh, touch upon after uh, after supraclavicular. But uh, other modifications which you can avoid uh, uh, giving uh, too much of phrenic nerve component is to block C7 uh, root separately, combine the suprascapular nerve with axillary, axillary nerve block separately rather than doing the interscaling block or uh, suprascapular nerve with infraclavicular block to avoid more uh, phrenic component. Moving on to supraclavicular brachial plexus. Now we, with the interscaling, we were at this level, at the nerve root level, with the supraclavicular brachial plexus will be just going under this omohyoid muscle, just at the uh, trunk levels. And you can see apart from subclavian artery there, there are a few more branches coming from carotid and uh, subclavian artery, which are the, the dorsal scapular uh, branch and the transfer cervicalis branch. So that's why you need Doppler because they look the same when you put the ultrasound probe. They may look like omohyoid belly or they may look like uh, nerve roots itself. Sorry, nerve uh, trunks. So landmark technique-wise, you were at the clavicle, just at the clavicular head, end of the clavicular head of the uh, sternocular mastoid. And this is called plumb walk technique where you will have just a uh, feel for the artery and just lateral to the artery, you will, uh, you will uh, put your needle in. But with ultrasound, you just keep the probe there like so into the supraclavicular fossa and tilt a little bit so that you can cut the, the trunks at the, uh, at the decent uh, uh, angle. And the volume, yes, I should go down on the volume now. Uh, 20 ml is more than enough uh, with uh, brachial plexus with ultrasound. Uh, but in a COVID situation, definitely I won't go for 30 ml. And the pattern you need to have uh, in your mind is the bunch of grapes. Lateral to the artery, you will have these uh, trunks lying. And this is the pattern in your mind you should be having while looking for the uh, ultrasound image. And uh, this is how you will be uh, putting the local anesthetic starting from the lower part first, which is called the tiger, uh, sorry, uh, the corner pocket. And this is the tiger territory, which is the first rib. So your needle should not really cross this area beyond this point because it, uh, you will encounter into the, and the pleura basically, pleural puncture and pneumothorax. So the ultrasound is a safety. So long as you can see your needle tip, you will be safe and you can see uh, the local anesthetic spread as well. And, uh, it is inferior to show uh, for uh, uh, interscaling block uh, for shoulder surgery because of the inconsistent block of the suprascapular nerve as we discussed. So this is from Nysora. You can see now this is my uh, lateral side. So a bunch of grapes lying around uh, the artery and the uh, artery is lying on the first rib. So in ultrasound, you will see exactly the same kind of uh, picture. You will see the first rib, you will see the pleura, you will see the vessel and the bunch of grape. Uh, around the lateral side of the vessel. So this omohyoid over here can sometimes be the vessel coming from the carotid or from the branch coming from the subclavian. So those transverse cervicalis or dorsal scapular. So while injecting your needle from this side, you may go through the vessel. That's why the Doppler is very important uh, while you're doing the supra scapular uh, brachial plexus block. 
This is from Alsora, and uh, my friend Dr. Amit Pawa has uh, done this video. I've taken his permission. And Dr. Ritesh Roy, I should uh, have really contacted you for your interscale in uh, uh, video. Here is showing the um, the, uh, the pattern again. So the scout scan is identifying the sono anatomical pattern, the first rib, the bunch of grapes on the lateral side of the artery, and then just at the tip of the bunch of grape lies the suprascapular nerve. But uh, if I'm doing the block or anybody who is regular with ultrasound, always approaches this corner pocket first because this is the area which is the lower trunk, CAT1 area. So ulnar nerve lies there. The, 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 the CAT1 lies there. So ulnar nerve can be reliably blocked when you start from the lower end. So he's scanning now with a Doppler as well as uh, once he's identified the subclavian artery, he will scout, scan, he will go slightly upwards, scan the interscaling groove again, look for all the nerve roots, C5, C6, and see how they confluence and they form the trunks. And uh, he has also seen the, with the Doppler, the, the vertebral artery and the vein. And then once he has confirmed, once he has done the sonatomical uh, identification, then he goes for the corner pocket first, injects there, blocking CAT1, which is the lower trunk, and uh, then moving out, just going on the upper side. So you can see all the time his uh, needle tip is visualized. So he's not really puncturing willy-nilly over here, over here. You can see the vessel is far away from the vessel, and it's quite safe block to do uh, this way. Sorry. This is, I'm doing the mobile, that's why it is. Okay, with ultrasound, then uh, the supraclavicular block, uh, you can refine it further. So as I said, if you are approaching the corner pocket, you will reliably block CAT1, but still sometimes I could be sparing with that one. Suprascapular nerve. So you will be focusing on these upper trunk, middle trunk, and then the lower trunk, but this nerve is escaping at this uh, level. Uh, so you are, if you are doing it for the shoulder surgery, you must include this nerve uh, into the, uh, the local anesthetic spread. And beware of the dorsal scapular artery uh, because they will look like this uh, in between or around the plexus. So when your needle is coming, you should not be really going through the vessel. You have to be very careful when you are. So that's why the doctor is important. And never lose the uh, needle tip visualization throughout the procedure. Uh, Dr. Giri has already explained about uh, the specific uh, complications or the, uh, the characteristics of the block. Interscaling, uh, as I said, almost 100% phrenic nerve block. It doesn't block CAT1. It has got a possibility of central spread, specifically if you are using too much of volume. So patient can collapse on you, uh, can go bradycardic. So have to be very careful. And the Horner syndrome, as he described, uh, uh, because of this uh, steroid ganglion blockage. With supraclavicular, the chances of phrenic nerve blocking is less. So a component of that uh, respiratory problem post-op is less. But there's a chance of pneumothorax, which is uh, uh, a unique situation with the supraclavicular. So chances without ultrasound goes up to 6%. With ultrasound, could be as low as 0.5 or maybe no. And the Horner syndrome and uh, the local anesthetic systemic toxicity could be a possibility because the volume we use uh, is higher than the, the interscaling. So superior trunk block, which is the new block these days, which is in between the... Uh, interscaling as well uh, and the supraclavicular. So it is around this area where you just focus on C5, C6 nerve roots because this is far away from the phrenic nerve. So it has got less uh, phrenic nerve involvement. And this is just enough for blocking the axillary and the suprascapular nerve, which is just about to emerge from here. So just targeting the superior trunk would be enough and we can avoid the interscaling um, uh, complications, problems with the interscaling block. So now touching base with the ultrasound part of the COVID precautionary measures. So all the international uh, societies and the bodies, they have come up with their kind of uh, guidance for uh, the PPEs and the protections you should be using when you are uh, using the, providing the ultrasound guided digital area. So main bodies like uh, ASRA, ISRA, or the Royal Colleges of Anesthesia from UK, they have come up with their own guidelines. 
the advantage of using ultrasound or regional anesthesia as such in COVID-19 situation is we are avoiding the airway instrumentation and ventilation altogether. It avoids the risk of uh, uh, lung infiltration uh, in, the, in the pneumonic patient, the airway management in the pneumonic patient. Uh, it eliminates the risk of uh, ventilatory dependence in the post-op phase, so the patient would recover into the OT, won't go to high dependency unit or any other unit uh, because he was intubated. It avoids the all the side effects of the general anesthesia, hypoxia, nausea, vomiting. So the quality of uh, anesthesia is better. It reduces the post-op pain requirement because the block is still working. So you can bring the patient in, get the operation done, discharge him if there is no sedation done. So the rotation and the stay of the patient is very, very uh, short. And it decreases the need of staffing. So this is the protocol which we follow in uh, Singapore. And this is adopted from the Canadian Society. So in pre-operative phase, we are, we, we are actually doing the blocks in a dedicated OR complex and doing all the block patients in one OT. Uh, uh, so once we have done the block, we'll carry on the operation in the same OT. Previously, we, have, we used to do in the, in the block room. Now, with the COVID situation, we are in an in a, in a isolated OT, uh, which is a negative pressure OT as well. So we are blessed to have all the advantage of the, uh, the technology over here. And uh, there's a dedicated uh, transport team so that if there is a suspected or a confirmed COVID case, then the teams are not, the transport team is not actually uh, um, bringing any other patients as well. So they are dedicated for only COVID uh, transfers. And uh, OR induction room, they are all equipped with the, uh, the covers and the, um, all the consent to be taken in a digital uh, format. During the conduct of a block, we we are not teaching the juniors now during the COVID situation. So it's only most experienced anesthesiologists uh, will perform the block, uh, minimal exposure. If possible, no junior or no nurse around to help you. And minimize the sedation. Oxygen, if at all, you have to use. Use the Hudson mask rather than the nasal cannula so that it covers. But all the patients should come with the face mask. Uh, um, PPP, we are blessed that we have um, N95 from the beginning, they have been providing us despite uh, it was not needed, but uh, the surgical mask is just enough for the regional anesthesia. But as an institutional protocol, we have to really go for N95 while we are uh, doing the block. And recovery to be done in the, into the OR itself. Post-op, the nurse or the provider should clean the ultrasound. And I'll show you how we clean the ultrasound exactly the same way as they have described in the Canadian um, Society of uh, Guidelines. And make sure that you have minimal block failure, so do all the precautions. Ultrasound probably has increases the chance of uh, block success. So if you have to add nerve stimulation to it, please do it. And uh, good volume, and uh, make sure that you're not overdoing the volume as well, so that it will cause the local anesthetic system toxicity. And stick to the specific uh, regional anesthesia technique. So both the blocks which we are describing about clavicle, uh, the interscalene and supraclavicular, uh, supraclavicular, they both have the chances of training nerve blockage. So if you can skip to the more distal blocks, that would be ideal. So the Royal College and the societies, the uh, intrinsic care societies of the UK, they have come up with these, um, uh, the danger signs or danger zone signs. So yellow, amber, and red. So all the airborne um, uh, generating procedures, they are into the red zone. So those, should be really have as much as cover you can have, including N95 for session or for the whole day if you are uh, doing few patients. But the droplet precautions, which is the area of the regional anesthesia, may not need to have N95 so long as you have got shield, so long as you have got a surgical mask and uh, you've taken all of the precautions. So, uh, as I said, we are into the droplet precaution uh, zone if you are using the regional anesthesia. And uh, now in India as well, with the rising number of cases, uh, uh, we are not in the green zone no more. So any patients coming through you, even if he's asymptomatic, could be a COVID career. So I won't really go really relax on uh, uh, just using surgical mask. If I if I'm encountering any patient for regional anesthesia, I would take him as a suspected COVID case or a positive COVID case and take all due precautions. So for regional anesthesia blocks, waterproof apron, glove, and uh, flu-resistant resist uh, 3M masks, 
If M95 there, well and good, should consider the eye protection. And uh, if you are doing catheters, then you should have a sterile gown. But uh, for just a single shot block, sterile gloves are enough. And this is the same guidelines which is reiterated by the ASRA and the European Society of Visual Anesthesia. So they are recommending that uh, RA is non-aerosol gen generating. That's why you should not really have N95. But if it's there, then um, make the use of it. Make sure the patient should come with a mask as well. And the people around you should have all the precautions taken. And use of plastic covers and the protect, uh, protective cover for the ultrasound equipment should be there. Um, then you must really uh, use the, um, the blocks which uh, have minimal respiratory inter inter interferences. So these two blocks which we described probably may not be that useful if you can uh, do axillary or inter intraclavicular blocks. And uh, ultrasound guidance is highly recommended by all the societies. So nerve stimulation along with ultrasound is, is really good for uh, block success, but we, we just use, use uh, ultrasound guided blocks and they are working absolutely fine. And be vigilant all the time. If you have to use oxygen, use a Hudson mask or minimal flow of oxygen. Postpone this, the procedures like epidural blood patch and this because this could be a little bit more uh, uh, invasive and more uh, time taking uh, procedure. So this is our operation theater. So if you have a junior with you, make the use of it. Let the junior handle the ultrasound machine so you're not touching the machine at all. And uh, if there is uh, the AU, the anesthesia unit nurses helping you, then they should be taking all the uh, monitoring part so you're not touching that part. But she will do help you with all the cleanliness after the operation. So if you are single-handed, like uh, here I am uh, without junior, I am with the patient who has actually got the mask on his face. And then all this trolley was laid up before the patient came in. So when the patient is inside the OT, I have no assistance around over here and ultrasound uh, just at my eye level set up before uh, for uh, the level I want and um, just get on with, your, with the block. This is what we use, the sheath probe cover for the probes. And um, if you have a long enough, then keep your ultrasound machine really away from the patient, if at all, um, until it's needed, then bring towards the patient. Most of the time, you should be really uh, lying alone. Cover the ultrasound machine with the sheet, uh, the plastic sheet if you have. If not, then just make sure that you're cleaning at the end of the procedure, cleaning the whole of the ultrasound, the area which you have touched, the buttons you have touched. It should be clean with the non-alcohol based uh, disinfectants because alcohol may temper your ultrasound probe. So either the bleach one, like sodium hypochloride, which is easy uh, uh, and uh, very cheap uh, disinfectant available, or the quart, which is the quaternary ammonium, benzyl ammonium chlorides. So this total solution which you have got for the probe covers and, uh, and the, the whole machine, we just use them. And at the end of the day, we leave the, the um, ultraviolet C rays for overnight with these uh, machines and the ultrasound in the, in the group. So this is another way of disinfecting your OT and the equipments. So, uh, I think I'm concluding my uh, talk. The, the, the basic idea during this COVID situation is do minimal exposure to uh, your, your patient, keep uh, your hygiene and keep washing your hands and make sure that we all come safely through this uh, pandemic situation. Thank you very much.